Chapter Seven of the Book of Werewolves. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Fricker. The Book of Werewolves by Sabina Baring Gould. Chapter Seven. Jean Grenier. On the sand dunes, a wolf attacks Marguerite Poirier. Jean Grenier brought to trial. His confessions, charges of cannibalism proved. His sentence, behavior in the monastery, visit of Delancre. One fine afternoon in the spring, some village girls were tending to their sheep on the sand dunes which intervened between the vast forests of pine covering the greater portion of the present department of Lond in the south of France and the sea. The brightness of the sky, the freshness of the air puffing up off the blue twinkling bay of Biscay, the harmful song of the wind as it made rich music among the pines which stood like a green uplifted wave on the east, the beauty of the sand hills speckled with golden cistus, or patched with grentian blue, by the low growing gremille crochet, the charm of the forest skirts, tinted variously with the foliage of cork trees, pines, and acacia, the latter in full bloom, a pile of rose coloured or snowy flowers, all conspired to fill the peasant maidens with joy, and to make their voices rise in song and laughter, which rung merrily over the hills and through the dark avenues of evergreen trees. Now a gorgeous butterfly attracted their attention, then a flight of quails skimming the surface. Ah! exclaimed Jacqueline Olzon. Ah! If I had my stilts and bats, I would strike the little birds down, and we should have a fine supper. Now, if they would fly ready cooked into one's mouth as they do in foreign parts, said another girl. Have you got any new clothes for the St. John? asked a third. My mother has laid by to purchase me a smart cap with gold lace. You will turn the head of Etienne altogether, Annette, said Jean Gaboriant. But what is the matter with the sheep? She asked because the sheep, which had been quietly browsing before her, on reaching a small depression in the dune, had started away, as though frightened at something. At the same time one of the dogs began to growl and show his fangs. The girls ran to the spot, and saw a little fall in the ground in which, seated on a log of fir, was a boy of thirteen. The appearance of the lad was peculiar. His hair was of a tawny red, and thickly matted falling over his shoulders, and completely covering his narrow brow. His small pale grey eyes twinkled with an expression of horrible ferocity and cunning, from deep sunken hollows. The complexion was of a dark olive colour, the teeth were strong and white, and the canine teeth protruded over the lower lip when the mouth was closed. The boy's hands were large and powerful, the nails black and pointed like bird's talons. He was ill-clothed, and seemed to be in the most abject poverty. The few garments he had on him were in tatters, and through the rents the emaciation of his limbs was plainly visible. The girl stood round him, half frightened and much surprised, but the boy showed no symptoms of astonishment. His face relaxed into a ghastly leer which showed the whole range of his glittering white fangs. "'Well, my maidens!' said he in a harsh voice, which of you is the prettiest I should like to know? Can you decide among you? What do you want to know for? asked Jean Gaboriant, the eldest of the girls, aged eighteen, who took upon herself to be spokesman for the rest. Because I shall marry the prettiest, was the answer. Ah, oh, said Jean jokingly, that is, if she will have you, which is not very likely, as we none of us know you or anything about you. I am the son of a priest, replied the boy curtly. Is that why you look so dingy and black? No, I am dark-coloured, because I wear a wolf-skin sometimes. A wolf-skin, echoed the girls, and pray who gave it you? One called Pierre Laborant. There is no man of that name hereabouts. Where does he live? A scream of laughter mingled with howls and breaking into the strange gulping bursts of fiend-like merriment from the strange boy. The little girls recoiled, and the youngest took refuge behind Jean. Do you want to know Pierre Laborant, lass? Hey, 
he is a man with an iron chain about his neck which he is ever engaged in gnawing do you want to know where he lives lass <laughs> a place of gloom and fire where there are many companions some seated on iron chairs burning burning others stretched on glowing beds burning too some cast men upon blazing coals others roast men before fierce flames others again plunge them into cauldrons of liquid fire the girls trembled and looked at each other with scared faces and then again at the hideous being which crouched before them you want to know about the wolfskin cape continued he pierre laborant gave me that he wraps it round me and every monday friday and sunday and for about an hour at dusk every other day i am a wolf a werewolf i have killed dogs and drunk their blood but little girls taste better their flesh is tender and sweet their blood rich and warm i have eaten many a maiden as i have been on my raids together with my nine companions i am a werewolf ah if the sun were to set i would soon fall on one of you and make a meal of you again he burst into one of his frightful paroxysms of laughter and the girls unable to endure it any longer fled with precipitation near the village of st antoine de pison a little girl of the name of marguerite poirier thirteen years old was in the habit of tending her sheep in company with a lad of the same age whose name was jean grenier the same lad whom Jean Gaboyant had questioned. The little girl often complained to her parents of the conduct of the boy. She said that he frightened her with his horrible stories, but her father and mother thought little of her complaints, till one day she returned home before her usual time, so thoroughly alarmed that she had deserted her flock. Her parents now took the matter up and investigated it. Her story was as follows. Jean had often told her that he had sold himself to the devil, and that he had acquired the power of ranging the country after dusk and sometimes in broad day in the form of a wolf he had assured her that he had killed and devoured many dogs but that he found their flesh less palatable than the flesh of little girls which he regarded as a supreme delicacy he had told her that this had been tasted by him not unfrequently but he had specified only two instances in one he had eaten as much as he could and had thrown the rest to a wolf which had come up during the repast in the other instance he had bitten to death another little girl had lapped her blood and being in a famished condition at the time had devoured every portion of her with the exception of the arms and shoulders the child told her parents on the occasion of her return home in a fit of terror that she had been guiding her sheep as usual but grenier had not been present hearing a rustle in the bushes she had looked round and a wild beast had leaped upon her and torn her clothes on her left side with its sharp fangs she added that she had defended herself lustily with her shepherd's staff and had beaten the creature off it had then retreated a few paces had seated itself on its hind legs like a dog when it is begging and had regarded her with such a look of rage that she had fled in terror she described the animal as resembling a wolf but as being shorter and stouter its hair was red its tail stumpy and the head smaller than that of a genuine wolf the statement of the child produced general consternation in the parish it was well known that several little girls had vanished in a most mysterious way of late and the parents of these little ones were thrown into an agony of terror lest their children had become the prey of the wretched boy accused by marguerite poirier the case was now taken up by the authorities and brought before the parliament of bordeaux the investigation which followed was as complete as could be desired jean grenier was the son of a poor labourer in the village of st antoine de pison and not the son of a priest as he had asserted three months before his seizure he had left home and had been with several masters doing odd work or wandering about the country begging he had been engaged several times to take charge of the flocks belonging to farmers and had as often been discharged for neglect of his duties the lad exhibited no reluctance to communicate all he knew about himself and his statements were tested one by one and were often proved to be correct the story he related of himself before the court was as follows 
when i was ten or eleven years old my neighbour duthelaire introduced me in the depths of the forest to a monsieur de la forest a black man who signed me with his nail and they gave to me and duthelaire a salve and a wolfskin from that time have i run about the country as a wolf the charge of marguerite poirier is correct my intention was to have killed and devoured her but she kept me off with a stick i have only killed one dog a white one and i did not drink its blood when questioned touching the children whom he said he had killed and eaten as a wolf he allowed that he had once entered an empty house on the way between saint coutras and saint anlay in a small village the name of which he did not remember and had found a child asleep in its cradle and as no one was within to hinder him he dragged the baby out of its cradle carried it into the garden leaped the hedge and devoured as much of it as satisfied his hunger what remained he had given to a wolf in the parish of saint antoine de pison he had attacked a little girl as she was keeping sheep she was dressed in a black frock he did not know her name he tore her with his nails and teeth and ate her six weeks before his capture he had fallen upon another child near the stone bridge in the same parish in eperon he had assaulted the hound of a certain monsieur milon and would have killed the beast had not the owner come out with his rapier in his hand jean said that he had the wolf-skin in his possession and that he went out hunting for children at the command of his master the lord of the forest before transformation he smeared himself with the salve which he preserved in a small pot and hid his clothes in the thicket he usually ran his courses from one to two hours in the day when the moon was at the wane but very often he made his expeditions at night on one occasion he had accompanied du Thiller, but they had killed no one he accused his father of having assisted him and of possessing a wolf-skin he charged him also with having accompanied him on one occasion when he attacked and ate a girl in the village of grillande whom he had found tending a flock of geese he said that his stepmother was separated from his father he believed the reason to be because she had seen him once vomit the paws of a dog and the fingers of a child he added that the lord of the forest had strictly forbidden him to bite the thumb-nail of his left hand which nail was thicker and longer than the others and had warned him never to lose sight of it as long as he was in his werewolf disguise du Thilaire was apprehended and the father of jean grenier himself claimed to be heard by examination the account given by the father and stepmother of jean coincided in many particulars with the statements made by their son the localities where grenier declared he had fallen on children were identified the times when he said the deeds had been done accorded with the dates given by the parents of the missing little ones when their losses had occurred the wounds which jean affirmed that he had made and the manner in which he had dealt them coincided with the descriptions given by the children he had assaulted he was confronted with marguerite poirier and had singled her out from among five other girls pointed to the still open gashes in her body and stated that he had made them with his teeth when he attacked her in wolfful and she had beaten him off with a stick he described an attack he had made on a little boy whom he would have slain had not a man come to the rescue and exclaimed i'll have you presently the man who had saved the child was found and proved to be the uncle of the rescued lad and he corroborated the statement of grenier that he had used the words mentioned above jean was then confronted with his father he now began to falter in his story and to change his statements the examination had lasted long and it was seen that the feeble intellect of the boy was wearied out so the case was adjourned when next confronted with the elder grenier jean told his story as at first without changing it in any important particular the fact of jean grenier having killed and eaten several children and of his having attacked and wounded others with intent to take their life were fully established but there was no proof whatever of the father having had the least hand in any of the murders so that he was dismissed to the court without a shadow of guilt upon him the only witness who corroborated the assertion of jean that he had changed his shape into that of a wolf was marguerite poirier 
before the court gave judgment the first president of assize in an eloquent speech put on one side all questions of witchcraft and diabolical compact and bestial transformation and boldly stated that the court had only to consider the age and the imbecility of the child who was so dull and idiotic that children of seven or eight years old have usually a larger amount of reason than he the president went on to say that lycanthropy and cuanthropy were mere hallucinations and that the change of shape existed only in the disorganized brain of the insane consequently it was not a crime which could be punished the tender age of the boy must be taken into consideration and the utter neglect of his education and moral development the court sentenced grenier to perpetual imprisonment within the walls of a monastery at bordeaux where he might be instructed in his christian and moral obligations but any attempt to escape would be punished with death a pleasant companion for the monks a promising pupil for them to instruct no sooner was he admitted into the precincts of the religious house than he ran frantically about the cloister and gardens upon all fours and finding a heap of bloody and raw offal fell upon it and devoured it in an incredibly short space of time delancre visited him seven years after and found him diminutive in stature very shy and unwilling to look any one in the face his eyes were deep-set and restless his teeth long and protruding his nails black and in places worn away his mind was completely barren he seemed unable to comprehend the smallest things he related his story to delancre and told him how he had run about formerly in the woods as a wolf and he said that he still felt a craving for raw flesh especially for that of little girls which he said was delicious and he added that but for his confinement it would not be long before he tasted it again he said that the lord of the forest had visited him twice in the prison but that he had driven him off with the sign of the cross the account he then gave of his murders coincided exactly with what had come out in his trial and beside this his story of the compact he had made with the black one and the manner in which his transformation was effected also coincided with his former statements he died at the age of twenty after an imprisonment of seven years shortly after delancre's visit in the two cases of roulet and grenier the courts referred the whole matter of lycanthropy or animal transformation to its true and legitimate cause an aberration of the brain from this time medical men seem to have regarded it as a form of mental malady to be brought under their treatment rather than as a crime to be punished by law but it is very fearful to contemplate that there may still exist persons in the world filled with a morbid craving for human blood which is ready to impel them to commit the most horrible atrocities should they escape the vigilance of their guards or break the bars of the madhouse which restrains them end of chapter seven recording by john fricker